Earlier I said that alternating current is generated using rotating machinery. So how does this work? Well, let's sketch up something here and it's going to rotate. So let's have it rotate like this and we're going to track a path in a circle. And you can imagine this as an XY coordinate system or in three space. Uh, and the principle of electromagnetic induction, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, says that if we put a conductor inside a magnetic field and we rotate it, then we're going to get an induced electrical current. So you basically put a conductor inside a magnetic field, and you rotate it, and you're going to induce a current inside the conductor. And it may sound like it comes for free, it doesn't. You have to put in some energy to cause it to rotate, and you may also need to ensure that you've got a magnet, but then that current that's going to arise inside the conductor, that is going to seem free. Okay, so the, the reason I drew it like this, if we track this particle going around, so let's say we're going this way, counterclockwise, and we'll start here at zero on the x-axis. So if we track this going around and we follow it, we're going to get an output that looks an awful lot like a sine wave. And indeed, this is one way that you can generate a uh, sine function y equals sine of x if this is the x-axis. Now as our conductor is going to be rotating, we're not going to call this x, this is going to be time. So when it first starts out, it's at zero, a little bit later, it's in this up portion, a little bit later it's coming down, and then a little bit later it's back to where it started. Now it also went through zero here, but if you're tracking one particle, it doesn't come back to where it started until a full cycle or 360. So if we model the voltage, well, I have time on the x, and we're going to put voltage now on the y axis. So some important points out here are that the voltage is zero when it crosses the axis, and also we can have a negative voltage down here below the axis. So putting this all together, we can say that now if we want to model a complete sine wave with voltages that can go past one, right, a sine function goes between plus one and minus one, we might want to have voltage go up to 240 or something like this. Um, so the complete equation can look like this, where we have here an amplitude out in front, and we have a couple of shifts. I forgot another shift down the back here. So we have a horizontal and a vertical shift. So those are both shifts. Uh, and then I have one more parameter in here, b, and this is going to be a very important one. If you modify how many times the angle, so two times or three times the angle inside the brackets of a trig function, that's going to be how much it oscillates. And so we're going to call this frequency. All right, let's have a look at a much better diagram that I can draw. So here I am in Desmos, and I've just drawn the unit circle. So we can imagine this green dot as being a coil that's placed inside a magnetic field. I'm just going to rotate it around, and then I'm going to plot the position over time of, well, that coil or that dot. So here it's going round and round. And then when I turn on a trace of the position and have a look, you can see that indeed that is an oscillating function and it's a sine wave. So we can see some properties here. We have a peak amplitude at pi by two. We have a zero at pi. We have a negative peak amplitude at three pi by two. And then we repeat at two pi. And these parts in the phase are important. These pi by two and three by pi, three pi by two because they represent where we're gonna have a peak output voltage. Now I also said earlier here that the voltage can sometimes be zero. So as this is rotating and we're generating electricity, sometimes the voltage is going to be zero. 
Well, right here, it's going to be 0 at pi, and also right here at 2 pi. So that these are going to be some special points that we need to consider when talking about rotating machinery and AC electricity. So having another look, this voltage is going to be 0 here, here, and here. So that's 0 on my axis. And this is some positive value of V, some negative value of V. So what happens when the voltage is 0? Well, if I just think about Ohm's law, V equals I R, if the voltage equals 0, that tells me that either the current or the resistance has to be 0. Now previously we said the resistance is fixed. So if voltage equals 0, then that means no current. And of course this can be a problem. No voltage, no current, well, no electrical work can be done and you know the lights go out. Alright, so there must be there must be a way around that. Now the other little bit here is that the voltage comes up to a peak value, and so we're gonna have here a V max. And it also goes down to a negative V max or a V max in the other direction. So this is also going to be V max. So what happens with alternating current? If you need to know a voltage, do you just say, well, it goes from zero to the max and then to the negative max? Uh, what is a good way to analyze and to rate this voltage? So we're going to use an RMS method or a root mean square. So I'll draw one more picture here. And while I'm doing it, I'll just ask you, what's the average value? What's the average voltage of this sine wave? Now, if we can imagine this current alternating for a long time, you say, well, what's the average of all of these pieces? Well, we've got a little bit that's positive here and a little bit that's negative here. And then finally, I might be having some voltage issues in, in my display here as well. But then finally, we try to average out all these voltages. And if you take the positives with the negatives, positive, negative, positive, negative, they all cancel out. So over a long enough time, all of these are going to cancel or average to zero. So the RMS is a statistical method in order to calculate what the value of an oscillating function is going to be. So we'll do an example of what RMS means now. Let's start with an equation for alternating current. So I have V, this is going to be my output voltage, and this is just going to be at any moment in time, so any point of that rotating cycle. So V max, earlier I labeled this as amplitude, so that is how high the peak or how low the trough we're going to go. Uh, and then I'm going to have a new one in here. There's not a this is not a W, this is an omega. So omega, that's a lowercase letter omega. Uh, and this one is going to be 2 times pi times f. So 2 pi, that should make sense, 2 pi in a circle. Uh, and then f, we're going to say, is the frequency. So this portion inside, remember, it's in the brackets of the argument. This portion inside represents how many oscillations uh, we go through up and down. So it's just changing some of the variables here. So root mean square, the way we're doing this is we're actually going backwards. So first we're going to start here with squaring, and then we'll take the average, and then we're going to square root. So first of all, I'm just going to square this whole function. So that just looks like this. We can square both sides. So all I've done there is rewrite that. Step two is the mean, and this is the same 
as the average. So again, we have an oscillating function. We're taking the average, but now because we've squared it, we no longer have any negatives. And so we want to average this function. And we're going to go back to our trigonometry. So we have a sine squared. And you may remember an identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So sine squared fits. That's OK. I can replace that. Now the cosine squared, I can do something with this too. Because I have a large amount of time, so my sine function looks like this. My cosine function looks like this. OK, and if I were to remove the 0 here and say which one is a sine function and which one is a cosine function, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't drawn this very well. Let's try again. OK, if I were to remove the 0 and ask you which one of these was sine and which one of these was cos, well, you wouldn't be able to tell, right? And that's because sine and cos are like brother and sister of the same function. So what we can say here is we can say that over time, cos and sine look the same. It's the same average. And we can just replace cos squared with sine squared. Now I'm getting lazy here. I left out my angle, so let's just Go back and write it in. There is a theta in here. Or you could write omega t for that angle. Now sine plus sine, that's going to be 2 sine squared equals 1. And now we can divide by 2 on both sides. And I'm going to get sine squared equals a half as an average value over time. So I can sub this one in to my equation. OK, that was step two. Step three now says, let's take the square root. And we can do this easy enough. So two big root signs. On the left, I'm just left with v. And on the right, I'm left with v max and then 1 over root 2. So this tells me that my voltage v actually equals v max over root 2 as an average value over time. So we have a factor here of 1 over root 2 that we're using.